Welcome to The Ship Show, part of the Callaway Podcast Network, where golf talk is a maybe at best. But here's your host, Jeff Newbart. Even on Valentine's Day, Amanda can't be nice to me. <laughs> I don't think it's totally fair because we're definitely talking golf today. I know. I know. All right. Welcome to The Ship Show, Valentine's Day edition. A lot of people wondered why it didn't come out yesterday. You'll know why in a couple seconds. Email us, shipshowcallawaygolf.com. Call us, 760-804-GOLF. Watch us on YouTube. Rate, review, Subscribe. And subscribe. Yeah. All right. I'm having a hard time hearing you. I know. Okay. It's all going to come out in the wash. All right. Whatever. We'll get it all figured out. Uh, lots to talk about this week, but we're super excited to be joined by European tour player and former Illinois college golfer, alive in studio, Thomas Dietrich. What's going on? Good, good. Thanks for uh, hosting me. Today. Welcome to California. <laughs> yeah, it's first time Kelly. It's I know. I kind of, I, yeah. I take it for granted. Um, but but again, I've never been to Belgium. So like if I went to Belgium, I'd be like, well, it's my first time in Belgium. And you wouldn't think anything of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's uh, Belgium at this time of the year. It's not too exciting. Not much, uh, not much to go and see. But, so tell me, uh, tell me three things about Belgium I don't know that I should. Oh, three things about Belgium. Yeah, we waffles. Got, we got bad. we got the best chocolate. Best well. chocolate. <laughs> you never knew that. Come on. No. They did right. a whole Hallmark movie about it. I mean, it. I've I've had Belgian chocolate. chocolate is but... the best. Okay. Ch- Belgian chocolate is the best. Uh, okay. I don't know if you're a beer fan or yes. not. Yes. All right. Well, beer fan. Okay. What, go. What's your What's your go-to? Uh, my go-to. Um, oh, there's so many beers. I, right. I quite like um, a brand called Leffy. Okay. Have you heard Leffy? Yeah, Leffy. Blonde one. How yeah, about Duvel? Like Duvel as well, but Duvel yeah. is a strong one. You gotta. I know. You gotta be able to take it. I kind of like Duvel. All right. Well, Duvel is uh, right. is is a pretty strong. All right. One so we got well. beer, chocolate. I'm liking this country. What's the third thing? Um. Great golfers. I know. So <laughs> you and Thomas Peters uh, teamed up and won the World Cup. That's correct, um, yeah. And, and I, I would think if people are, are rating you know, great golf powerhouses, they may not have Belgium top on their list, but they, they might want to consider it. How, how popular is golf you know, in day-to-day life over there? It's uh, it's growing, you know. The golf mm-hmm. is definitely not as democratic as as it is uh, over here in the states or in England or in other countries. But it's it's right. definitely growing. You know, you got Nicholas Kulsar who came yeah. out in 2012, played the Ryder Cup, yep. made a name for himself, uh, started playing amazingly well. Then obviously Thomas Peters got out of college in 2014 or 2015, mm-hmm. played the Ryder Cup in 2016. So all that. Um, it's it's golf is really making a name for itself in in Belgium and uh, and yeah we we three three players on tour right now and it's really it's growing it's it's becoming uh it's becoming the cool game to play now I like it all right well I got a couple other questions for you we want to get to but first I got to recap Lex I was up at Riv earlier in the week mm-hmm. with uh, it seemed like half our department was up there which was awesome except for me we, we had a big problem. well you were working on something you're working on that Leave that out what you were working on. Okay. Um, <laughs> lots of Maverick in the field. Uh, yeah. Literally, every time I was looking, there, there was Maverick. Uh, lots of drivers, lots of fairways. I'm going to ask Thomas about his experience because he did some fittings yesterday down mm-hmm. with Dean over at the test center. Um, my favorite moment of it was there were there were a couple players. I'm not going to say who they were because we don't have their name and likeness playing with J.J. Spawn, our buddy J.J. Oh, nice. And on 13, they were uh, there was a bomb. Then there was a ball that almost killed us and hit a tree. We had that all day. Like mm-hmm. like where the trucks park at Riv, you're basically in in the the landing zone. And truck, Trevor, right there. Sean, and I there is our truck with Mark Leishman coming Dan- out of it. Danger zone. Really dangerous, especially on Pro Am Day. That's why we didn't go Pro Am Day. That would have been brutal. Stay out of the golf course. Huh? Yeah, but this ball like hits a tree like right over our heads and ricochets back into the middle of the fairway. So JJ comes walking up and I said to him like, Hey, you trying to get out of doing a shoot with me? You trying to hit me? He goes, That wasn't mine. I have a Maverick, and he points down the fairway. The ball's like 50 <laughs> yards down the fairway. It was pretty awesome. Um, we also uh, have a little video, I think, coming out today on the fairways yeah. and kind of some of the pros' first impressions on the fairways, which is cool. Trevor went to the Survivor premiere. He did. He but he's to, not here today. He's not here. I know. So that's kind of a downer. But right. I well, watched week, the we'll Survivor premiere. Yeah. So. Are you a Survivor fan? I'm not. Are you a reality TV fan? Uh, no, not that much. Not really. You like a lot of sports, though. Yeah, I'm into sports. Which yeah, is I like your sports, favorite reality sports, TV. Full of tennis, full of cool. stuff. But I tell you, sports is the best reality TV there is on television. It's the best, you know? Yeah, it's unscripted. Mm-hmm. The producers aren't influencing who's in the show, who's not in the show. They're not, for the most part, when it's live, they're not editing it in a way, even though golf's the one sport where sometimes I guess you do edit because you, you can't show everybody hitting it once. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right, the other question. New Toulon putters available. Chicago, Seattle, Atlanta. Uh, special shout out to Joe Toulon, who we, mm-hmm. we shot an Odyssey commercial this week. I think I can say that. I don't know. We just I'm did. I'm not sure. <laughs> um, and Joe spent like four hours with our teams working together, so it was pretty awesome. But, uh, you know, between Joe, Kevin, Kellen, who who hates being on any type of camera. Do you ever work with Kellen? 
never, hates being never on did. camera. Johnny never Thompson, uh, we had Austi up there, Sean Toulon, uh, Tim Reed, the whole team. Uh, it was awesome hanging out with everybody, working with everybody. Uh, we got to do a dinner with Phil Kenyon. So we're going to do some putting content cool. with Phil Kenyon. He's a pretty good putter. Yeah. Phil, Phil, no, no, he knows his stuff. I mean, he's got some of the best guys on tour yeah. in Europe and in, in the States as well. And he's, uh, he's a pretty not, 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 knowledgeable dude. Yeah, for sure. So you can check out all the new putters at odysseygolf.com. All right, now that I think I've cleared the deck, yeah. we can we can have our conversation. Um, so what got you to the University of Illinois? Because, I, huh. I mean, somehow Mike Small, Coach Small, has a nice little pipeline going from yeah, Belgium there is, to... Yeah, that's, that's the word, you know, pipeline. And uh, they just um, the basketball team actually uh, got a Belgian player as well. And the really? joke goes around at school that Mike Small actually recruited him. I would, so, I would think so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, several things. You know, academically, College of Business was pretty good. So for me, getting a degree was actually a big thing. Um, then met Coach Small, you know, kept in touch with him, met him once, twice, uh, really liked the coach he was he was just a great guy uh went and visited the school um teammates were great uh, everybody just had a great feel going there you know uh remember i visited in november it was there was a blizzard blowing through it was uh, oh, no. weather wasn't great but still fell in love with the place and obviously thomas peters my good buddy was uh, was there as well and that that kind of it was a no-brainer for me i i go chose to chose to go there and um and it was the best four four years of my life Oh, sorry. I was just like, I was just listening. Okay. You're allowed to. <laughs> I know. But then normally when he's well, done talking, after I, we're done listening, we ask another question. It would be my turn. I know. Question. I was just listening. I was thinking about it because I was like, okay, we're like about the same age, which means like we've done, you know, like life has gone through similar stages, go to college, get a degree or whatever. But well, my, now my, he's, minus, he's Minus being a like one of the top golfer. amateur ranked golfers, college accolades, <laughs> yeah. winning college golf tournaments. You want me to keep going, Lex? No, please okay. don't. But I have... <laughs> I can't keep my head on straight today. I'm really tired. Yeah. I'm sorry. Lex went to Arizona State. Another uh, good golf school. A little yeah, bit. pretty good. Well, yeah, but I didn't go to play golf there. What did you do there? I went for journalism school, so I went to do all of this, okay. basically. So, um, yeah, a little bit different life paths. Yeah, Le Lex's, we'll show you at the test center, Lex's putting is the thing that's holding oh. her back from a college golf career. Oh, my gosh. She's I don't, get, uh, I don't get need the yips to going. No, she doesn't have the no. yips. She has the hammers. <laughs> We are not calling. We're not saying my nickname. No, it's going I away. didn't say it. I'm saying you, you you tend to hit the putts a little harder than they need to be hit currently. Yeah. Well, ugh, I'm just falling apart. All right. Over here. Can you give me a break? Sure. Happy Thanks. Happy Friday. All right, Thomas. Uh, we got to talk a little your grind on the Challenge Tour. So we talked about this at dinner last night. Yes. A lot right. of people, you know, when they when they turn pro, right? They're like grinding and grinding, and sometimes it takes you know quite a while to to get their tour card and move forward. Um, you kind of didn't have to grind too long on the challenge tour, yeah, did it was, you? Yeah, it, it's true. I didn't have to grind. I only spent six months there, half, pretty much half a season. It was yeah. uh, it all went pretty quickly. But uh, I mean, I've got good memories of it. But it wasn't easy, you know. Yeah, but it was I a win. It was. Uh, it was. There was a win. Yeah. yeah. Um, a lot of made cuts. A lot of made cuts. Didn't miss a cut actually. I know. I think 11, 11 events on the challenge tour that I played pretty yeah. much just over half the season, and uh, <laughs> and I got it. So I, I got. I finished. Uh, Finished university in uh, in June 2016. Right. Played NCAA's in Oregon. Came back right away to, with the week after we played. Uh, I played my first event as a pro, which was a Challenge Tour in Belgium. Yeah, played really well there. Finished sec sixth there, so yep. top ten. And then the week after in France, I finished second. And that right away, that kind of momentum that gave me a little bit of momentum. And I had status right away on that. There was yeah. a reshuffle, gave me status, and nice. I kind of kept playing the whole uh, yeah. the whole season on a challenge tour. And uh, and yeah, kept missing cuts, kept uh, kept making cuts. Sorry, yeah. and uh, and a few months later, I um, I won as well. I won yep. one. Uh, that was pretty pretty amazing. I won with twelve shots. Yeah. That was uh, I was in the zone that week. Uh, made everything. Um, and then, yeah, in November, I cut my card for the European Tour. One of the last cards as well, so it was. Right. It came down to the wire. And you've had some success on the European Tour already. Yeah, um, haven't won yet, uh, except the World yeah, Cup with Thomas Peters. Mm -hmm. Haven't won yet, yeah. you know. But um, but I, f I feel like I'm I'm getting better and better, uh, keeping my card every year. I've been having a lot of good finishes uh, lately as well, and uh, yeah, a couple like top tens, a couple of top tens, um, second few thirds yep. uh for a lot of few top fives as well so it's it's all uh it's all trending towards the right direction and uh yeah it's obviously my goal is to come over here at, at some point as well and play play maybe both or that's uh that's kind of the goal so what does your schedule look like this year then 
So my schedule, um, it's a bit unknown yet because there is uh, some things happening in, in, in Asia right now at mm -hmm. the moment. So yeah. we, we, we don't really know. But uh, as far as um, the next few weeks are concerned, I'll be playing in the Middle East. There is a tournament in Oman and Qatar. I'm actually flying on next Friday from L.A. to Dubai. It's a 17 hour flight. So oh, oh that'll be fun. I'm not too looking forward to that. Do you have any good movies to binge watch on that? Uh, I've got plenty of shows. Okay, good. Uh, what, what, what are you watching these days? Uh, these days I'm watching something called The Crown. Oh yeah. oh yeah, I'm watching the crown really right cool. now too. How good is that? I really yeah, like it. Yeah. What season are you on? I'm season two right now. Okay, yeah. I'm I'm a little further than you, so I won't give it away. Okay, just uh, but it, yeah, this, that's a really good show. This like fascination for the royal English family, it's, I know. it's unbelievable, isn't it? Yeah, it's crazy. It's, yeah, it's 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 pretty it's pretty interesting. So I've been watching that kind of. Uh -huh. I think that keep me keep me busy for uh, most of the most of the flight. And yeah, you, then, you, you can watch the series like twice. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah, I can. I can probably eat twice. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe take a three nap. times. Take a nap. Probably sleep. Yeah, and uh, and then I'll be it. I'll be in Dubai. Yeah. What's What's been the craziest thing about traveling? Because one thing I always admire uh, the most about the European tour players, especially those who you know, I just say like with Henrik, we talk about it. He's like a world player. Yeah. He he he's a member of all tours, and you know he'll be in Singapore one week, Orlando the next week. He's comfortable everywhere. Isn't yeah. He? It just doesn't matter. Just like when do you get used to getting on planes all the time for that long? And just like all right, I'm flying halfway around the world again. You know, you gotta, I think you you need to you kind of need to know yourself. You need to know how, how how long you can travel, how many weeks in a row you can do. I've kind of find that three, four weeks, four weeks was the absolute maximum. Yeah, and that's so what you're doing now. Yeah, yeah. Now I'm doing, yeah, four weeks playing tournaments. Right. Mm -hmm. Right now I'm four weeks on the road, but yeah. I mean this is this is a pretty chill that week. In I don't California. know. This, this really, seems pretty tough to me. <laughs> I'm not really saying this is work. You yeah. know, this is. I've had a hell of a week. Lex has had a hell of a week. <laughs> <laughs> Probably more than yeah. me. It's Valentine's Day today as well. I know. That's true. I know. As well. I know. Yeah. yeah. What? Do you have big Valentine's plans? No, I don't. I'll be. Uh, I'll be on my own. All right. <laughs> Lex? Huh? Tomorrow. I tomorrow. Have Valentine's plans tomorrow. All yeah. right. Oh, wow. Yeah, we're going out tonight. We're going That'll to uh, Chef Jason's restaurant, uh, Born and Raised, a little steakhouse oh, nice. downtown. I've always wanted to go to it. I'm going to nice. Javier's. Oh, nice. Yeah, I'm pumped. I love. It's really good. Mexican wait, wait. Food. You're going to Javier's tomorrow? Yes. Not this one. The one in UTC? No. Oh, I'm going okay. to a different one. Okay. Because ironically, I'm going to Javier's tomorrow with oh. some friends in town. <laughs> the UTC one. That I would have been funny. I will not be at that one tomorrow. That would have been funny. <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah. Lex wouldn't have Anyways. Out. All right. Uh, tennis. Tennis. Yeah. It's my... So, uh, it's not my passion, but I, I love it. You know, I try to play as much as I can. Uh, I've been doing a few weeks with my tennis racket uh, in the bag as well. Right. You know, um, can I ask you what tennis racket you have in the bag? Are we allowed to do that or will, that, will, will Lance get mad in I've the control room about a sponsor? Fitter. You do? Nice. Yes, I, do. I have the same one too. That's the best one, you know? Yeah. <laughs> well, I pretty much figure like if, if, you know, I mean, if Roger's using it, it probably yeah. is okay. That's right. Yeah. It's probably good enough. So yeah. Uh, yeah, I've been, I've been playing a lot of tennis. I follow quite a bit as well. Nice. Um, my trainer, my fitness trainer, who travels with me, not every week, but most right. of the weeks, he's a, he's, he, he trains a, a very good, Tennis player as well, oh, da cool. Daniel Medvedev. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Russian dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah I saw him. I saw him at the U.S. Open last year. Yeah, he's just uh, he yeah. won. I think yeah, he won Indian Wells this yeah. year. He's, he's he's been on an amazing. Yeah, run. he's a great player. Yeah, he's a great player. So I've I've been following a lot of tennis. That's and obviously cool. Roger is a uh, is one of the guys. Have you met him? I, I've never met him. Never yeah. had the chance to meet him. But uh, one day, hopefully, I'll I'll, uh, I'll get the chance to meet him and totally. who knows, play play with him. I mean, literally, yeah, they, that, that's the cool so thing amazing. about tennis. Just imagine like going out and hitting. You know, that's where tennis and golf are so unique. Like, I mean, the three of us could go play golf on the same golf course, that's true. albeit you'd be seventy or eighty yards yeah. ahead of us most of the time. <laughs> uh, and looking at our watch, like, really, an, an, another miss putt. Um, but. But in tennis, we could go out and you, you, yeah, could go out you can rally you, with, with yeah, Federer rally, and stuff. Yeah. It's it's just such an awesome yeah. It just it's just a great game, you know. And and everything you know, how golf you hit every, obviously one shot every five ten minutes. Yeah. Tennis, you just you just keep going. You know, you can play for an hour, just yeah, just letting it all out and and sweat a little bit, and it's just just yeah. an amazing sport. You Did know? you play junior tennis growing up? No, never really. I we had a tennis uh, at my grandma's uh -huh. house. We had a tennis there, so I grew up playing there a little bit. Um, and yeah, I never really played a lot of junior tennis, but just it's just a sport that I really like yeah. uh, watching and practicing. Have yeah. you tried pickleball? What is that? Oh never my gosh. That. Yeah, so pickleball, pickleball is the fastest growing sport here in the US. Imagine mm -hmm. a tennis court and they divide it into four pickleball courts. And there's all these like crazy rules about the kitchen. You can't go into the kitchen. You can hit some balls it's out of the like, air, what? but it's like a wiffle ball. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, it's not paddle, right? No. It's it's like it, it's very similar to paddle. Okay, yeah. uh -huh. it's very similar yeah. to paddle. Paddle in Europe, it's kind of becoming the the new trendy sport. You know, yeah. everybody loves to play it now, and it's just uh, it's pretty cool because you you don't even have to be really good at it. You just yeah, you just kind of you got the walls around it, so it, it's just totally. a really fun. So yeah. the other sport I love in Europe is uh, handball. 
Oh yeah. So European handball, the team handball from from yeah, the, yeah. that was always one of my favorite Olympic sports to watch because oh, really? these athletes are it's just intense, like isn't insane. It? It's how good so they intense. are. It's so intense. Yeah, no, no, no. It's really. Uh, I would not have been good at that. Same. Yeah, yeah. I know I my like. limitations. So what other sports are you into? Uh, you know, I'm into. I actually grew up playing field hockey. Really? It's really uh, it's a cool. big sport. I, our our national team is really really good. Mm -hmm. We won the national championship. We won the World Cup. Nice. Um, we won the World Cup um, two years ago. Actually, the same year we won it uh, at golf course. Uh -huh. And um, I've got a few friends in a hockey, national hockey team, and it's just mm -hmm. a sport that it's really fun. It's it's big in Europe. Yeah. O over here, it's more of a, a women's sport. You know, mm -hmm. we don't really have NCAA yeah, field men's, hockey, sure. but field hockey is more of a women's sport. But in Belgium and Europe, it's it's pretty mm -hmm. big. What about baseball? You get into baseball in Europe? Baseball, over here? yeah, I was I was into it. I was into it. I was. Who's uh, your team? The Cubs. You're a Cubs fan, oh, of course. So I'm you weren't team. really a long-suffering Cubs fan because right around when you started <laughs> yeah. liking them, then they, they won, won a World they Series. They won the World Series. Yeah. yeah it was Teams, yeah, it's really good yeah, timing. Yeah. Yeah. I remember Wait, that. I was there. I was like, I don't remember. Socks were. Okay. Just bleep out the year so, so in case we got it wrong, just bleep all that stuff out. We found on the show that sometimes we just bleep stuff out just for the heck of it. Yeah. And no one knows and then, what we're saying. And, but and it just it, listens really it. funny. Yeah. Yeah. It comes off yeah. really funny when you yeah. listen to it with bleeping out. Um, all right, so I want to talk a little bit about your, your golf game because Amanda did accuse us of not talking enough about it. Um, long off the tee and about to add a Maverick driver to the bag. Can That's you talk correct. to me a little bit how, how the fitting went with Dean yesterday? Yeah, it was great. You know, I, we, I tried it out in uh, in Dubai uh, a mm -hmm. few weeks a few weeks ago, but you know, it, during the tournament, it's never easy to, yeah. to put something new in the bag. I knew what, what my old Epic Flash was doing, and... Uh, that's kind of the key uh, for me. And I mean, it was testing one really good. We tried out a few things, you know, I've, I've got the tendency to leak it right a little bit. So we put a little bit of weight in the, in the back of the head mm -hmm. and uh, and it's it's great. You know, we tried a new ball as well and yeah. uh, it just a lethal combo, you know, it was it was really good. Yeah. Longer, and further. And uh, and what I really liked about it is that my um, yeah, the dispersion, it, it, the dispersion yeah. was was less, you know, I was able to I, I noticed my misses were a bit uh, whenever I would hit it poorly it was leaking a bit less right and, yeah. and staying straighter which which is a difference between hitting the edge of the fairway or just in the first cut or yeah totally cut, and right? and uh the standard maverick standard model i believe not yeah. the sub-zero you've That's been in correct, a sub-zero yeah. previous and now you're you're going to be yeah, a standard. Really standard yeah um and the ball speed yeah went improved, up a little yeah. bit i think i i think with the new ball as well like yeah. i gained two two and a half Miles an hour, yeah. so that's which ten is, yards. Which is yeah, which is a little yeah. bit, and uh, and and you know, it's it's a game of detail. So if you can yeah. add a few percentage here and there, it's uh, that's what's going to. You be have no idea on. how much our producer Daniel loves that you called it a game of details. We actually <laughs> oh, really? call him details. That's his nickname. <laughs> um, then the fairway wood, the fairway wood, the fairway wood was no brainer. I tried it out the first one, which I believe the standard was the standard one, yeah. and just I really like the look of it. It's a bit more shallow, you know. I was yeah. I, I used to struggle to hit it. Um, my miss was a bit thin, you know, a bit of a spinny ball flight, and that one really it just easier to hit uh, yeah. a bit higher in the club face and, yeah. and get that more solid strike. And I mean, I hit three shots with it. And I knew Dean, it was the right one. Yeah, and Dean said that after the third shot, it was like, I built this uh, other one, so but, you might as yeah, well hit it yeah, anyway because we'll I built it, it, but we'll try it. But we know, we know which one's we know, going yeah, in the bag. <laughs> it's crazy. Through, What's yeah. it like, though? To, to get the confidence. I don't know you're you're relatively new to the to you know our team, obviously, yeah. since you know you turned professional, mm -hmm. um, you know, compared to like guys who've you know been playing for, for decades. Everyone is saying this fairway wood, it's like two or three swings and it's just right in the back. Yeah, it's just you know, the the three wood it's just a special club. You know, some guys I mean I've seen guys playing with the same three wood for, for fifteen years, you know, right. or ten years. So it's it's just a special club that you, you need to write to find the right balance between yeah. what you want off the tee, something strong, but then obviously something you can you are able to hit a bit higher, land it yeah. soft on the par five, for example. Right. So it's it's a it's a tricky club, and I think once you fall in love with one, you, you get it. And how, keep how far do you carry your three wood typically? Uh, I'd say in yards would be two seventy five ish, something like that. Two seventy five ish. ish. So I could, if I hit mine twice, I'd get there. <laughs> if I hit my oh, driver, I, I can probably get you there. You haven't seen it, especially right now with this, this stupid <laughs> thing. Um, and what about your driver? How far is your driver going these days? Uh, what a driver in yards? It would, I would carry it three, just around, th just over three three. I would mm -hmm. say, yeah. Are you a yards or meters guy? Meters, meters, so meters. So how do you, so so you just did that that quick in your head? Yeah, well, it's easy. Ten percent, come on. I know. Ten percent isn't that hard. <laughs> yeah. 
but the other just way around, just like about 10 percent. about yeah, it, that's about a good 10%. enough rough estimate yeah, and then how do you enough, yeah. one thing i'm always fascinated with is so when you go to different courses how much do you like especially in the european tour you guys play all over the world yeah how, how often do you have to factor in like altitude and like you know humidity? Every, week. every week so do you set your numbers every week with your caddy <sighs> not really i mean we will set my numbers when we play especially we we've we only got a few weeks where it really makes a huge difference we'll mm -hmm. we'll play one week in switzerland up in the mountains yeah amazing event um yeah. There, it makes a big difference. Um, and then you get South Africa as well. Right. And then also, the thing is that, okay, you got altitude, but then you got um, mornings can be chilly. Yeah. So it, it'll fly a bit more, but yeah. you, you can add 4 or 5% of fly yeah. fly time. But um, but the, the biggest difference is in the afternoon. Sometimes you play around 3, 4 in the afternoon, and the ball just never ends flying. It's unbelievable. Yeah. So that's sometimes you just, yeah, it just almost three shop it's three club um it's a three club difference three wow. club difference yeah. people always joke oh i gosh. i hate playing morning golf and and it's not because i'm a morning person so you'd think i'd really love doing morning golf the reason i don't like morning golf here is it's always like this morning it's super foggy, foggy. Mm -hmm. and the ball doesn't go anywhere, the ball doesn't yeah. go anywhere. I, I need all the help play, i can get i always play, try to get yeah. the afternoon tea time yeah, you play in the afternoon really you feel good. like you're hitting it like 30 30 yards lower totally further. Totally. Yeah. The only problem here is the wind off the ocean tends to pick up in the afternoon, so you can somehow counter Just hit it. Like, it downwind. Just hit it downwind. Well, those yeah. downwind holes are awesome, <laughs> but, but those first four that are dead into the wind, it doesn't do so well. All right, Thomas, uh, we are going to get you over to the ECPC. Uh, we're we're going to have you uh, hit some stuff that we want to see, and I might even, if you don't mind, I might have you try to uh, help help our, our listeners out with a, a driver tip. Because okay. uh, one thing you know, Dean was saying last night too, which is you have such a, an amazing ability to just hit the center of the club face time after time after time again. Yeah. Some of us would like some help with that, and I just would love to know like what you and your coach work on, like what's your go-to drills, like when you're going to practice the driver. Okay. So if you don't mind, maybe we'll try to do that out there. Yeah. Perfect. All right. We'll uh, after this break, we are going to be joined by our buddy Dave Bartels. Dave yeah. is senior director in our golf ball R and D department, and uh, the documentary that airs Tuesday night on Golf Channel, 10:30 p.m. Eastern, 7:30 West Coast. So I can do the three-hour time difference math too. Um, <laughs> and uh, Dave's a big part of it and tells some really great stories. He started here in, in the late 90s 98? and was around with uh, with the original Rule 35 and, and some of the original Callaway golf balls. So you're going to want to check that out uh, Tuesday night. But first, why don't you check out the teaser right now? I thought that this ball was such a game changer. We should should have sold it for hundred dollars a dozen. Before you know it, he's raving. He's telling everybody about him. Chicopee, Massachusetts, is one of the most important cities in golf that you probably don't know about. We've been making golf balls here longer than just about anywhere in, in the world. At one point in time, we were doing well over a million golf balls per day. To think of Callaway Golf coming into the business as a dedicated golf company was viewed internally here as a significant threat. The product was so well received that people wanted it, and we were having a really challenging time manufacturing it. We were gonna maybe shut Chicopee completely. We knew that we needed to invest in, in the machinery in the factory. As we come to the end of this multi-year capital investment, we're very confident that the equipment that we have here is the most modern golf ball manufacturing equipment available to any manufacturer in the world. The Ball That Changed a Town, the story of the Chicopee Golf Ball Plant, premieres February 18th on Golf. Welcome back to The Ship Show. Phone number to call us, 760-804-GOLF. You know what's interesting, Lex? You list huh. phone number slash email, but then you list email, then call. And then call. phone number. Yeah, yeah it's, it's interesting. not quite You're logical. <laughs> okay. Uh, ShipShowCallawayGolf.com is the email. We want to hear your emails. And watch this thing on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, you're wearing a snazzy sweater. People Thank don't you. get to see it if, if they don't and watch it on YouTube. And I got my eyebrows threaded this week. Oh, even yeah. better. <laughs> even better. I'm just lucky I have a desk in here to block my footwear. All right. <laughs> Joining us on the phone, as we promised before the break, is Dave Bartels. Dave has been at Callaway since 1998. Lex, were yeah. you, where were you in 1998? Uh, wait, I was in second grade. Second grade. Who was the teacher? First grade. Uh, I had the same teacher for three uh -huh. years because I lived on a mountain in a one-room schoolhouse. Excellent. We See, Dave, we later. learn all these cool things when people <laughs> when people say the different years that they've done things. Um, and then we see where, where Lex was. Well, I'm, I'm right there with you, my friend. Um, for those of us yeah. who don't know you, 
Um, I'm like, we've gotten the chance to know you over the years yeah. we've been here. Give us a little summary, because yeah. I think you have one of the most interesting careers. And I'll just be honest with you. Um, you're going to be able to see, Dave, in the documentary on Golf Channel, The Ball That Changed a Town, the story of the Chicopee Golf Ball Plant. And what's awesome is Dave is almost on the way to Chicopee right now. Like, he's going early to watch uh, a screening maybe up yeah. there. But give people a, a kind of a, a, the highlight summary, because your, your career is so interesting to me. Yeah, I grew up in a small town in Southern California called Ridgecrest, California. Um, went to school down at UC San Diego and got a mechanical engineering degree from there. And briefly worked at Hewlett Packard uh, in San Diego right out of college. And about that time, um, I really loved sports, wanted to get into the, the sports industry with, a, with an engineering degree. There's somewhat limited options, at least in terms of companies hiring. And I happened to get lucky because Callaway... Uh, was starting a golf ball company in 1997, late 97, as well as TaylorMade. And I think Nike was getting into the golf ball business at that time. And so I uh, put my resume into to a few places and got a call back from Callaway and the rest is history. <laughs> just like that, here you are. What was it yeah, about like <laughs> designing a golf ball that really interested you once you got here? Uh, you know, when I first started, it was I was pretty young, not – you know, maybe as young as you are now, but mm-hmm. I was, uh, I was right out of college and I was, uh, I was just really interested in just, just getting into sports and being around athletes and, uh, in the business, I didn't really know exactly what it entailed to do golf ball R and D. Um, at the time I started as a testing engineer, developing test equipment and, uh, working with tour players on our new products. And that was kind of leading up to the big launch of our ball in 2000, the rule 35 ball. Um, but yeah, just the, I've, I've come to appreciate and understand just the complexity that goes into engineering a golf ball. And I get the question all the time, like, what, like what's so hard about it? It's just a little white ball. And it's, it's pretty fascinating once you start digging into the details, what goes into it from a chemistry standpoint, from an engineering standpoint, from an aerodynamic standpoint. You know, there's, there's a lot of disciplines that go into golf ball design that are super fascinating for kind of the nerdy engineering uh, guy. Well, Dave, you know, one thing that Vince Simons, who who's also uh, one of the other characters you'll get to see in the documentary, Tuesday night, 1030 Eastern. Uh, it also re-airs uh, mm-hmm. Tuesday, 1030 Pacific. So you have two options to watch it. Uh, and then the next day, it'll be at 530 Eastern, 230 Pacific, all on Golf Channel. Um, Vince Simons always says that what makes a golf ball so challenging, Dave, to engineer is it's not like a car where you have like the front of a dashboard and you just hide all this crap behind it that you've never ever seen that a the entire thing needs to be extremely high performing Mm -hmm. b it does so many different things right because at some point you're trying to slam it and have it go as far as humanly possible and 99 percent of us when we putt are trying to kind of hit it soft and kind of roll it gently (laughs) into (laughs) lex is the one percent dave who hammers putts as hard as drives um but You know, I think it's such a fascinating piece of equipment because there are so many different variations and it is such a long history. You know, think about, you know, back in Scotland when the game started with like basically feathers and Gouda Percha and stuff like that to Balada to these modern things. What I found fascinating is you said that when Callaway started to get into the golf ball business, they didn't do it the traditional way. Uh, kind of like Ely Callaway was not a traditional, you know, golf mm-hmm. executive. They tried to find people from other industries. What industry, you know, what were some of the other industries that that kind of came to Callaway Golf Ball R&D? Because I think that's one of the things that makes it so unique. Yeah, it definitely was. And at that time, I think they were looking when they were getting into business, you know, do we want to buy a company? I think Ram Golf might have been going out of business at the time. Or do we want to start from scratch? And I think Ely, I, I get the pleasure to, to work uh, with him or, or, or met him a few times uh, back in the early part of my career. And he really was a visionary in terms of what he wanted to do in the golf ball business. And our R&D team at the time was, was people all over the, the industry. Our, our head of uh, uh, VP of R&D was from DuPont. He was a, a senior manager uh, type role. He has a PhD in chemistry and he, we kind of built our team. We had a very strong materials uh, team. We had aerodynamicists uh, from Boeing. We had uh, also people from within the golf industry that had some experience, uh, PhD statisticians that could help us define our, you know, kind of testing parameters. We had people that were really, I, I don't know, you, you name it, all across the board. But, yeah, those very, very uh, kind of technical disciplines trying to come together to not only just build a golf ball, but build like an organization from scratch, which was really, it was really fun being a part of that. Cause it was kind of a, it was kind of like being at a startup, but funded by a big successful golf club company, which, you know, had launched big Bertha and had gone public and, and was investing a lot of money into the business. Yeah. So what was it like to see, you know, the success of the first product and then like what came after that? Oh my gosh, it was, 
it was pretty amazing. You know, I, I was I was kind of at the the front end testing with the players when we were kind of developing the early prototypes and and when we launched the Rule Thirty Five, just seeing their reaction. You know, guys at the time it was John Daly was on our staff and Bruce Fleischer was our senior. He was a the, the yeah. He was a great senior, senior tour, tour player. Yeah, great. Yeah, Annika Sorenstam, obviously she was a big part. Uh, yeah. Colin Montgomery. She was you know, pretty these good. Are people that are like you play golf their whole life and all mm-hmm. of a sudden their their eyes are opening up. Well, holy moly, you know what's going on. Um, and so, yeah, when we launched that, uh, it was it was a pretty – at the time, I was too young to maybe fully appreciate it because you really only have your first launch once. Um, but, you know, being a part of that was really, really special looking back on it especially. Yeah, and there's there a lot of great people that worked with me in, in that in that environment that, you know, through the various stages of our company aren't with Cattle anymore, but they, they definitely are still a big part of our, that, that success early on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and Lex likes to call the Rule 35 launch fourth grade for her. <laughs> <laughs> well, not not to give you know too much away because we do want people to watch the documentary. Mm-hmm. Uh, we just showed the teaser just prior to you coming on. If you watched it in YouTube, otherwise you just got to hear it. Uh, voiced by Chris Harrison of uh, Bachelor fame, it's a really great story that that really kind of hits at sort of the the, the heartstrings of of, mm-hmm. of just any kind of part of humanity because you know this town and this facility at one point you know Spalding was making basketball balls there they were making volleyballs football all these team sports things and there were like 14 1500 people employed yeah. and it got down to as low as as under 200 mm-hmm. uh luckily with the success dave with with your r d team and the success of of vince norm uh and and all the guys in, in gals in chicopee that workforce has tripled what type of pride do you have as your where i'm going to get to where you are in a second because i have a great story about where you are <laughs> but but what what type of pride do you have when you walk in the doors to that building today knowing that that work you did on a small little sphere has helped give people jobs and and homes and kids to college and you know it's, it's pretty awesome it's it's a pretty awesome feeling I, i'll be honest with you i mean when we when we were you know in california starting the business <laughs> it was it was new and it was fresh but being able to move out to Massachusetts and the operations out there, just the amount of respect that that I have for those guys and the, the years of experience they have, the the people, the workforce out there was really amazing. And then the fact that, you know, we, we survived some really troubling times from an economic standpoint, you know, the downturn. And, and like you said, the job, uh, you know, the jobs were, were going away out there. And um, to be able to turn that around, you know, there's obviously a lot of people on, on – all sides of the equation work in that and just the you know the investment that the senior team and the board of directors and everybody put into making it work i think at a time where they could have you know maybe pulled the plug and gone overseas or done something uh, different from a business standpoint they really invested in the people out there and it's pretty amazing so now you know there's a lot of pride people you know walking around they it's you can sense it and if you've been there long enough to have been there when it wasn't that that feeling uh, it's it's a pretty cool experience yeah, and speaking of investment, you know, now that there has been um, this growth in the workforce, we've also invested into the plant itself. Has an engineer, can you talk about like the importance of putting that money into manufacturing and how that helps you do your job better? Yeah, I mean, it's a big part of, you know, making golf balls are extremely hard. I mean, you, you touched on it a little bit earlier, but it's trying to picture like a perfectly round object. I mean, it's hard for artists to draw a perfectly round circle, much less. A 3D sphere with multiple layers around it, right? I'm so trying to draw one right now, <laughs> Dave. See how I did. I want to see a picture of that, by the way. Yeah, no, you but, can watch it on YouTube. To, do that, yeah. to be able to do that well, it takes discipline, it takes good equipment, and it takes, you know, um, you know, good procedures and, and, and good people and training. And you can try as hard as you can to, to do a good job, but if you don't have the right equipment, it makes it really challenging to be market leading. And so, you know, we've through the downturn in our business and, and the subsequent like kind of rise in our business. I think we've now that we've established ourselves as a as a long term kind of play in the golf ball industry over the last uh, few years. Now we're taking that next step of really investing in the equipment so that we can, you know, together take that take our quality as well as our productivity and and everything really to where we're market leading. Um, so yeah, we're it's, it, we're really optimistic. We're really excited, and it's it's always fun going and buying new equipment just from an engineering <laughs> standpoint. You know, it's like going shopping, I guess. You just kind of, oh, man, let's get that new mixer, the new, you know, extruder, and you're, you're 
it's pretty exciting. It's see, to spend money. see what, what, what I love about talking with you, Dave, is you have so many different facts and figures and things mm -hmm. like in your head and you remember everything about the golf ball. I'm that same way with sports. So Dave said when he drove in, he's like, I'm pulled over on the side of the road to do this. He's in Trumbull, and Connecticut. And like freaked do, out. Do you know why Trumbull, Connecticut matters? <laughs> no. Dave, do you no know why idea. Trumbull, Connecticut matters? Did you see the sign when it said entering Trumbull, the little words that were right below it? Did you notice it? I didn't. It's <laughs> home of the home, Trumbull, Connecticut is home of the 1999 Little League World Series champions. Oh my god! And if you remember oh. Little League baseball at then, so Chris Drury, who went on to be an All Star mm -hmm. in the NHL as a hockey player, he was the big dude. He was like the pitcher, long blonde hair, hit a home run, and they beat yeah. a team. They beat an international team in the final. It was like one of the first times the U.S. had won in a very long time, and like the whole country kind of got behind this. Like yeah. this is a pretty, you know, this is the 40th anniversary this weekend of the miracle on ice. Lex has no idea what I'm wow. talking about, but uh, Trumbull, Connecticut <laughs> is a very, yeah, Trumbull, Connecticut is a really historical place, and Chris Drury went, it, went on to, uh, to, to obviously a great hockey mm -hmm. career, who knows what he would have been baseball. The other fun fact is Kevin Cash, the manager of the Rays, also played in that Little League World Series. What? Yeah, so they, wow. well, oh, that's awesome. we used to do a lot of, every time when, when it was Little League World Series time, we were doing Sunday Night Baseball, they always mm -hmm. asked us to make the... So it was like Lloyd McClendon. Like there's a yeah. list of guys that played in the Little League World Series yeah. that made the big leagues. And Chris Drew, we always showed that home run that he hit. He hit this mm -hmm. monster home run, his long blonde hair, kind of running around the bases. It was pretty awesome. That is cool. The other bit of advice, Dave, I have for you, and this is my my new thing, yeah. is uh, every time you go to Chicopee now, just, just sport a Yankees hat. <laughs> They're so beaten up in there with because That's of and, not gonna happen. And, and the other thing, Dave, that, that I've done and Trevor, maybe you'll put up the picture of my last uh, trip there with oh, with my Yankees hat is, uh, you know, we, we have talked and we and in the documentary, it's mentioned uh, about X-ray technology mm -hmm. and quality. And the way I kind of look at that is kind of like weeding out sort of things that don't belong. And so I named one of the machines Alex Cora. Because oh so the God. first X-ray machine, X-ray one, I'm trying to get it to catch on. So just if if you get a chance and you say to Vince, say how's Alex oh Core, the X-ray machine doing, uh, he'll he'll thoroughly enjoy that. That's pretty good. Yeah. I'll, I'll mention that too. Yeah, I have the other ones named too, but I'm going to roll them out slowly because oh, New England man. does have a sports lineage of of cheating. And Jeff is never going to let them forget yep. it. No. No, it's not my job to. Well, Dave, thanks so much for being a part of this. Really thank you for being a part of the documentary. Mm -hmm. You can see Dave, Vince, uh, Petra, mm -hmm. Alan Hocknell, Chip Brewer, Phil Mickelson. He's in yeah. the documentary. You saw him in the teaser. Uh, it's The Ball That Changed a Town, the story of the Chicopee Golf Ball Clant. Plant. Tuesday, plant. What did I say? No, 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 I'm not, not feeling plant. well. <laughs> Tuesday, 10.30 p.m. Eastern, 7.30 Pacific, on the Golf Channel, a re-air three hours later, and then the following afternoon mm -hmm. on Wednesday, uh, I'm going to be down in Orlando yes, with Vince, mm -hmm. with Petra, with Finley. We're yeah. going to do a podcast from down there. It's going to be great. On Tuesday that we'll get up to kind of give you uh, some last second kind of notes on on the documentary. Vince mm -hmm. and Petra are going to be on Morning Drive. I know. So cool. 40 uh, Eastern time. They will be on Tuesday morning. I can't tell you how excited I am to get to go down there and see my buddy John Burkett again. Mm -hmm. There's really not much that's better. Uh, <laughs> Tim Killian who I was lucky enough to hire directly out of college is going to be producing the show. Cool. So that'll be kind of cool. He went Full to Syracuse with me, you. so I get to kind of see that whole thing. Yeah. So I'm excited to get down there. But really, just working with Burke, it's one of life's uh, treasures, and I'm excited to see him. <laughs> I so, can't wait Dave, to thanks watch. so much for being here. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Also, Thank don't you. forget to check out uh, three new Toulon putter mm -hmm. models. I got to spend some time with the Toulons oh, yeah. uh, in, at Riviera, which I'm sure I talked about in segment one because I'll make sure I talk about yeah. a couple days up at Riviera. Mm -hmm. But we had a lovely dinner uh, where Sean and Joe Toulon were there, uh, and um, our buddy Phil Kenyon was there. Oh, wow. And, and Newsflash, we're going to do some content with Phil Kenyon coming up uh, a little bit later in the year, uh, in the spring. But new Toulon models, mm -hmm. Chicago, Seattle, and an enhanced Atlanta. Yeah, I'm um, excited to see. I haven't yeah. even seen the enhanced Atlanta. Yeah, I have. It's, oh. uh, it's I, I used to putt with an Atlanta, and I loved it. Yes, uh, correct. Up until I switched to triple track 10, mm -hmm. I was putting with the Atlanta. Um, it's If you like milled putters, go check these putters out. The Chicago, Seattle ones are catching mm -hmm. on. Of course, all your favorites like San Diego, Madison, yep. uh, they're all still available. They're super hot on tour. When, when, when yeah. you're in a tour van, which is what I was... Um, it's pretty crazy. Yeah. One last thing is, so Trevor, Daniel, I'm not going to talk about this in segment one. Okay. Daniel, Sean, sorry, Trevor, Sean, mm -hmm. Cliff, and myself uh, were kind of just to the right of the 13th fairway at Riviera. At Riv. And all the trucks kind of park in a line. Uh -huh. And as, as I noticed, Kevin Napier had the cab parked before... Uh, between where the golfers were before the the, the trailer, and I'm yeah. like, well, what do you got going on here? Because it seems like that's that's hard. Because then you got to pull it all the way around and go around to the other side of it. Yeah. And he's like, you'll see. We're like literally in the landing zone. 
And All he right. said, Wednesday's the worst because of the Pro-Am day. Uh-huh. Um, there were multiple times where, like, literally we would watch balls and, like, Trevor one time had to move or he would have been <laughs> I impaled. I heard about this yesterday. Um, uh, a guy who I'm not going to say, not not our staffer, so right. I can't say his name, mm-hmm. hit, hit two balls that almost killed us mm-hmm. uh, and then didn't find it funny when I hit the tripod, like, right in front of his ball. I'm like, do you want me to move that? And it was, <laughs> obviously, they're playing a money game. He's like, yes. Like, okay. <laughs> okay. You know, it almost just killed me. You can say yeah. sorry. But, uh, yeah, it was pretty crazy. R- Riv is That's my wild. favorite on the West Coast. Really? Um, oh yeah, yeah. I so didn't know so that. yeah, it's it's my favorite. I've been lucky enough to play it. Mm-hmm. Uh, the course is just phenomenal. It's beautiful. It stands the test of time. That first tee shot at Riv mm-hmm. is is just unlike anything else. The tenth holes, the best short part four. Um, it's not gimmicky. It's not tricked no. up. You have the energy of L.A. Yeah. You have the traffic of L.A. Ugh. Like four hours to get up there. It's brutal. Yeah, uh, but it's but yeah. beautiful. So check out uh, Riv. We, uh, we we're real excited about the week. This is the end of the West Coast yeah. Swing. Then the, the tour goes to Mexico. Uh-huh. I talked to Kevin Napier this morning. He uh, was near Phoenix, oh. uh, gassing up uh, Big Bertha as he's on his way. He he goes to Honda. Oh, but what's yeah. lucky for him is he used to have to do it in one week. Mm-hmm. Now, now he has that two. off week because of because of, of it. Yeah, so it's yeah. a little bit of time. So, great. Anyway, uh, it was a great segment one with Thomas Dietrich. <laughs> really great talk about Riviera. <laughs> Uh, I, I thought it was weird that I changed clothes, but I've had a rough week. A little weird. Um, next week, on the way to Orlando, you have a lot of work to get done this week. I do. I have a ton. Of, I have just a lot of work. Yeah, I think we all do. But uh, yeah, it, it's it's a great time to uh, to go check out some some stuff in the putter crowd. If sure you're one is. of these areas that's really cold, go check out a Chicago. Yeah, it's a good cold weather. weather or putter. Seattle. Seattle. Yeah, also cold, rainy. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? All makes sense to do it this time of year. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Thanks, Trevor, for being in the back. And we will see you Tuesday from Orlando on The Ship Show. You can stream or subscribe to The Ship Show on Apple, Spotify, SoundCloud, or the Hackers Paradise mobile app.